So, um, uh, and the zoning administrators, Tom Badowski, um, for the applicant, please introduce yourselves. Okay, I'm Sean Cunningham from uh, O'Leary Works Civil Associates. Good evening, I'm Pablo Maderos from Heidenberg Properties. Paul O'Leary from O'Leary Works Civil Associates. Julie Curtin from Downstreet Housing and Community Development. Mike Rushman, Land Strategies and Consultant for Heidenberg. On the screen. Uh, David Roy, I'm the architect for Weeman Lamphere Architects, uh, working for Evernorth. And Simon, Vice President of Real Estate, Heidenberg Properties. Do we have anyone Adam else? Evernorth. Jason Lazar, Heidenberg Properties. And uh, Kevin Warden with Engineering Ventures, working for Evernorth. Very good. What are you looking for here? My chair for Christy. Oh, Christy. Hey. And our recording secretary, Christy. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you. Need a bit of setup. There's an Alex Aftup. <laughs> Not you guys. Not oh, Alex is one of the architects working on the project for Weeman Lamp here. Okay. You got a phone? Yes. Um, and she, I, just to like, I have to leave at 7.30 to go yes. to the Barrytown Select Board uh, this evening, so I just wanted to give you a heads up for that. Sorry, did quite hear you? She has to uh, leave. Yeah, I have to leave at 7.30 to go to the Barrytown Select Board. Okay, very good. That door's a good exit door. <laughs> <laughs> exit left. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, then in that case, I'm going to swear in everybody who tends to give testimony before this board tonight. The first step, uh, if you tend to give testimony, please raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, the matters before this board tonight under penalties of perjury. I do. I do. I do. Thank you. Um, so we have a sketch plan review. So we're really not expecting action per se tonight. Um, but uh, we're going to go over uh, proposed plans, which I've seen the site plan so far, and that's all we've mm -hmm. seen. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so um, I, I'd like to ask the, the applicant, who's representing the applicant, uh, to start off by telling us uh, what we're looking at here tonight. Um, and, and, and if you'll humor the board, this is a new zoning regulations. I think it's the first time we've actually reviewed something in this zone. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so, which is a new zone for us. Excuse me, oh, I know Julie needs to leave at 7.30. Yes. So before we get into the meet, maybe if she wanted just to, to talk about the, her, pro, her end of the project. Uh, all right. Uh, I, I, that, that'd be perfectly all right with me. Uh, so that's okay with the... Uh, I'm not, you're not the applicant per se, but you are. <laughs> uh, sure, and I, I can be very brief um, and just appreciate Tom, um, the courtesy to have the opportunity to address the board and uh, introduce myself a little further. Um, as I said, I'm with Downstreet Housing and Community Development. So we are a co-developer with Evernorth, and we will be a co-owner of the Fox Run Housing Project, which is part of the um, application that you are reviewing. This evening, it's a 30 unit mixed income, uh, affordable housing, multifamily uh, project. Um, and we were just thrilled to be here and to be working with um, the mall and the town. And uh, we've been a part of conversations about the Newtown Center now for a number of years and excited to be really stepping forward to provide housing in an area that's um, an exciting place to see housing come in where it's where it's really needed for the community. So I, other than just to, to clarify, Downstreet is here as the, uh, we will also manage the housing uh, once it's built. We will be the property manager and uh, be you know, on site every day um, at the property. So I'm happy to answer questions about our role, um, but I'll let others talk about more of the specifics and technical details of the sketch plan. Okay, uh, Tom, do you have any comments with regard to this application? No, thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. For having me. Thank you. Uh, questions by the board members? Carla, any questions? No, thanks. I guess I have one question, and, I, and 
you will be operating and owning the facility. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, and there'll be Dow Street be operating and owning. Is that who is the entity? Well, so we will have uh, with with Evernorth. The property will will technically be owned by a limited partnership, of which Evernorth and Dow Street will be the co general partners. And um, we will have, uh, you know, as part of our financing, we will also have an, an equity investor in our project. But we will, so we will be a co owner in the partnership that will own the building. And the partnership will contract with Down Street to be the property manager. So it's our staff who will um, do applications for new residents and get people leased up and help people. Um, you know, we will manage the building, we will manage the mechanicals and do the maintenance. and. Um, oversee the grounds on the property. It's probably not really relevant to the application, but uh, will you have a representative on site full time? We will not. We have um, property managers who manage multiple properties so and uh, maintenance tech. So we often have people coming and going, but we won't have someone dedicated on site uh, you know, as a regular office sort of uh, staff. Thank you. Welcome. So I just have a question. So you and Evernorth are the developers, correct? To, as partners, as the as the developers. That's okay. And in the Fox Run Housing. Okay. Yep. I don't know if Matt would like to add anything to that. No need to add. That was a good description. Thank you, Julie. Hi, by the way. Thanks for Hi, being yeah. there. Uh -huh. It'd be nice when we could all be together. Yeah. Well, actually, given the number of people we have here in this size of this room, probably not well. Right. <laughs> We're crowded enough. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, like short. Yes, it is. Unless there's something on the down street part of this, um, uh, we'll move over to a, a, an overall description of the site. And the properties is how it meets sort of your show. Uh, this is a this is sketch plan review. There's really no precedence for this um, in our bylaws. It's a, sort of a thing we get together here and get an opportunity to vent a little bit. And... <laughs> sure, I'm going to go first. Yeah. Uh, where where would you like me? Would like me to sit here? I mean, it puts my back to the uh, camera. Why don't, or... you, why don't you sit uh, where the camera can be turned toward you? Okay. Uh, so maybe perhaps sit next to Holly. Okay. You would. So I'm Paul O'Leary with O'Leary Burke Civil Associates. I am Heidenberg Properties uh, Civil Engineer. You've uh, seen me before with Deuce Vitch and Chestnut Place. That was another project that we did. So I'm just going to talk in, in generalities at first. So we're looking at uh, developing what's known as Outlot A and Outlot C. Uh, if you look on, on the sketch plan, you can see Route 62 at the bottom. You can see the existing entrance road into the mall. The two buildings colored in brown are the two buildings that we proposed, the affordable housing building, Fox Run, and then a Starbucks restaurant would be the first building in on your right. You can see on the very top of the screen is the Chestnut Place building that you've all seen well under construction. And you can just see the edge of Walmart on the very top of the screen. So uh, we're certainly aware of your new town center. And we're aware that there's been a number of hoops that the town has had to jump through in order to qualify for your downtown uh, development district. And we do understand that you have a current zoning regulation that addresses the new town center, but you've been asked to modify that with some addition conditions. And we're aware of those conditions, Tom has sent us to it. So without getting into the specifics of the zoning regs, because they're still kind of in flux a little bit here, I just want it to be known that Heidenberg Property's intention is to fully comply with the new town center requirements, right? So whatever that comes down the road, we're, we're gonna roll with the punches and we'll make the adjustments that we need to to comply, all right? So that, that's the most important thing that we want to relay to you folks tonight is we're on board, we're on board with the new town center, we wanna go forward. So when you look at the plan, 
it, it's it's a little bit confusing, uh, to be honest. We have a section that's shaded in dark, and that's a portion of the Berlin Access Road. That's the new road that would serve the Fox Run housing project and, and the Starbucks. And then as you continue on in gray, you can see you can see the future alignment that's shown with the new town center, right? So the road would come in and then it would, it would go across. So we're also aware that, you know, there's still an outstanding issue with the school district. Um, the town has yet to acquire that property. And obviously until the town acquires it, we can't develop it. You know, it's pretty hard to develop on land that you don't own. It's been done before, but we don't recommend it. Right? So, so in a perfect world, that school district issue would get resolved in the next two to three months. And when we came back to you, we would have a full set of plans that would show the road in the new alignment, details, profiles, cross sections, the whole bit. And we would come back and say, we're coming back and we're gonna build the road in the new alignment with the sidewalks, the bike paths, the streetscapes, the street lights, all the things that the town center requires along of course with our, our two new buildings. Now, in terms of timing, the, uh, the Fox Run building typically has a construction length of somewhere between 10 and 12 months. We're hoping that we can start construction in the spring. So if we started construction, say in April of 22, the building actually wouldn't be ready to occupy until roughly March or April of 23. Starbucks is a little quicker. If we, if we started construction in April of 22, there's a fairly good chance that Starbucks might be ready to be open um, by the holidays. Of, of that same year, but hard to say exactly. So, so the timing, you know, is, is important for us. Obviously we need to get that Fox one building started because it's such a long, not long, but it's a typical time frame. Like we've seen Chestnut Place, which is a much bigger building. I, I think they're running 13, yeah. 14 months for construction before they're ready to go. So, so 10 to 12 months is actually fairly decent for, for a 30 unit building. So, as I said, in a perfect world, we'd have the school district property wrapped up. We'd come back in front of this board in a few months with a full design showing the road right where the new town center, town center plan shows it. Meet all the requirements of the downtown development district and, and away we go. However, we're not, no one's sure that the school district is, is gonna happen. So the reason for the two calls on the plans is that if the school district acquisition gets delayed at some point in time, we would come back to you with the same set of plans, a full full design of the new town center road and everything shown on the plan, but we would ask for a phase construction. So what we would ask is phase one construction would be everything that's shown in the dark gray. And when the school district property came available, then we would construct phase two, which would be the completion of the alignment. Now the plan shows a number of stormwater areas on it. And some of that has to do with, we're not sure where we're gonna build in. In a perfect world, we would put the stormwater on the school district property. It's the lowest portion. It, we can easily gravity drain all our stormwater to it. Um, it, it's a, a spot that's really not that well suited for building construction. So we'd love to build the gravel wetland or build our, our, our storm pond there. But if for some reason the school district property isn't available to us in say the next six months or something, we're gonna have to shift gears and we're gonna have to probably do some alternative stormwater design. And that's, that's where you see some of those other spots where we say potential stormwater, because we're hedging our bets a little bit. It's possible that we might even do two full stormwater designs to try to keep this thing going. And then uh, again, we would be delighted if the school district issue was settled in the next couple of months. It would certainly make it a lot easier for us, but, but we, need to, uh, we need to move forward. So, you know, we, when we did Chestnut, uh, we made some provisions to extend the gravity sewer out that way. So we're gonna gravity sewer all these properties. Uh, we made provisions uh, to extend the water line out there. The water line all through the Berlin Mall um, a property has now been taken over by 
the water district. So we're all set to extend that out. So we're in good shape there. Not officially yet, but it's it's it's, it's close. It's yeah, they they inspected it all. We built it all for their specifications. So you know we're in we're in fairly good shape. Uh, obviously, we're showing a couple of grayed out potential buildings, a parking lot um, between the the town alignment and the Starbucks. You know those are just kind of placeholders. We don't could be one building, could be two building, but it, we're trying to reflect what the new town center center plan shows. Could you point out on the the sketch plan yeah. the buildings? You know the potential buildings. If yes, um, if we do get the so just because it's hard to read yeah. what these light areas are. So uh, essentially, this is the potential building area that we have right. for the Heidelberg property, folks. Obviously, there's potential building area on school district property that okay. we haven't shown, but we, we just basically have a, a building that's similar in size to Fox Run, okay. shown here in gray, with the idea that you know that's a possibility. It, who knows? It could be could be something completely different. Could be a couple of small buildings. Um, and just that depends. Would be parking behind. The parking town behind town it. That's correct. It'd actually be a through street because part of your new town center wants a block, and so it'd be a type B or a type C yeah. street. But it'd be mm -hmm. on street parking. It'd be a regular street going through. It'd have street lighting, sidewalks, all, all the elements that your zoning regulations are currently. Required. There are no C streets, so it would. It would likely be a B street. What's that? There are no C as in cat streets <laughs> in the new town center. It would be a likely be a B as in boys. Street. Oh. And, and that's why the plan has changed quite a bit in just the last couple of weeks because originally the the new town center plan had a C street. Yeah. And a C street was like a through street. You didn't require parking along it. Uh, I'm not even sure it so had to be curved. Isn't, but this isn't a C street. No, it's a B street. No, that's a B street. So, now. so part of the requirements oh, on yeah. the downtown development conditions, I believe, okay. is that you amend your zoning and eliminate C oh, street. So, okay. so we've been we've been juggling like our plan. We we now show parallel parking spaces along along that main road going in because that's going to be a requirement of your zoning. And again, coming back to we're we understand the zoning regs are in flux. We're we're we're, we're on board. We'll do what we need to do to, to move this forward. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, if I, I'd yeah. like to just add something to Please. this. So, um, uh, so Paul is correct. There was a series of um, streets with, the, with yeah. our uh, application to the downtown board. They came back with uh, a condition that only A, B, and P as in Paul streets would be allowed. So uh, it was it was a discussion amongst um, the town, the select board, planning commission, all the property owners that are involved in Newtown Center, in, including the hospital, the auto dealership uh, entities, uh, Berlin Mall, Fox Run, uh, uh, Dusevich was invited. Uh, so all, all those entities met and uh, it was decided because the town was really considering not accepting the new town center as it was conditioned. And at a meeting on March 29th, 2021, all these individuals came together via Zoom and, uh, and, and such. And it was unan unanimously voted that all parties would accept those conditions. They all agreed to it. And so again, I, I wanna stress, as we, we may hear this in future projects, our, our zoning regulations have not been yet changed to reflect that, but all the property owners that are impacted by this were at that meeting and agreed. And I'll let Heidelberg, they can attest to that fact as well, that, but, but that's the case. So. Well, that, that explains an inconsistency. Correct. So, this is good. <laughs> So, so obviously we're here tonight just for sketch plan. So we have a simple plan, well, well, kind of busy plan, but relatively simple, not a tremendous amount of detail. Um, we have some elevations of what the proposed Starbucks might look like. If you'd like to see that, we have um, some preliminary elevations yeah. of what the Evernorth Fox Run um, building might look like that, that we can certainly share with you. When we come back, um, you know, we'll have a, a full-blown traffic report. We'll use Roger Dickinson. We did the traffic report for, for Chestnut Run. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have a, a full landscaping plan. We'll have a lighting plan. We'll have a streetscape. We'll have stormwater details. All the things that you're going to expect to see mm -hmm. for a full set of plans when we come back.
uh, the next time. So I'll turn it over to maybe Pablo, and, uh, and you can talk about Starbucks a little bit, and just let him know what it is, and, and we can we can flip the plan over. John, you want to help him find the right one? Anybody has any questions or wants to uh, make a comment, uh, just raise your hand. I, I think I see most people, and I'll try to acknowledge you. Yeah, I think they're pretty much all our teams. <laughs> yeah, we lost, we lost, we lost our team member, Carla. Yeah, what happened to Carla? No, I'm here. It's just the sun's be coming in, so I shut the camera off. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Paul, you may want to share the pointer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're going to walk over and grab it. Technology is increasing, but slowly. <laughs> Um, okay, all right. Um, the camera, though. <laughs> That's okay. They've all seen it. So. Okay, so um, this is a 2,500 square foot um, Starbucks. This is the uh, the elevation. The, the the rendering shown shows just three different color palettes. Um, the whichever if the town has a preference uh, of the three, but this is a, a, a preliminary kind of just a. a uh, an idea of what this, this Starbucks is going to look like. The shape is is consistent. The uh, the, the general color palette will be any of these that uh, uh, that, uh, that you see here, and it's uh, fifty five seats uh, inside and out. It's uh, got a drive through, um, and the, uh, the the parking uh, associated with it uh, on the site will be unique to and specific to the. Uh, to the Starbucks, you can see there's a, a uh, the seating area outside has umbrellas. There's a, a railing around it to uh, to protect it, um, but it, this will be visible as you enter in from uh, from the uh, the Berlin Wall Road entrance. The drive-through will be around uh, around the back. Uh, it will be along the uh, in the second phase. Uh, it'll be uh, parallel to the. Um, the Bruce Street that Paul was alluding to earlier. Do you have any similar facilities in the general area? There is one that was constructed, I believe, in 2019 in uh, Essex, Essex Junction. Right on the corner of Susie Wilson Road and Road okay. 19. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just went up right, right in front of Lowe's. Yeah, All right. in the Lowe's, and then there's a People's United Bank on that corner. Mm -hmm. Easy boy, that's There true. was also another Starbucks <laughs> over, by, uh, over by Costco that just went in. Uh, yeah, that one. but that's more in a, that's a little different. That's not it's a standalone not a, store. It's not a drive through. The one on Susie Wilson is, a, is kind of a Does standalone the one store. Susie Wilson same, same. have a drive through too? Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. <laughs> well, particularly during COVID, you know, yeah, it was pretty much the only way they operated. They they opened mm -hmm. right about the time COVID hit. And so without the drive through, they would have been out of business fairly quickly. So, okay. so I have a question in yes, terms sorry. of Starbucks in. In downtowns, do those have drive-throughs? Um, initially, I guess some of the older ones uh, probably do not. But if Paul was alluding to, with the uh, the onset of the of the pandemic, um, Starbucks and pretty much any national restaurant chain um, was it was trying to figure out ways to do drive-throughs mm -hmm. so that they could stay in business. So more and more. Um, uh, retailers, restaurants are uh, are instituting drive-throughs, mm. so um, it's it's part of their uh, their normal function. I think uh, over the probably the last I don't know how old the one the, uh, uh, the any of the, the, the downtown ones uh, would be. Uh, obviously, if it's more of a uh, of a pedestrian type of area. Yeah, well, Probably that's no, what no this is supposed to be, is a pedestrian area. That's why I was sort of I, 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 it. I understand that. The, uh, most of the, the, the people who come to our shopping center are driving there. So they're um, being positioned along, along Route 62. Uh, it would allow people to, uh, to, to drive there, enter into off of, uh, off of Route 62 into Berlin Mall Road. Enter into the drive-through and come back out and get back right back on 62 and proceed on their on their way. 
I think that's an important point. Michael, say, just say who you are. Yeah, Mike Rushman, uh, Plan Strategies, or the network. I think it's important to think about the whole site plan for the Newtown Center. And that this particular site is a, a border site, if you will, a fringe site. It's one of the entry sites. And so it's not at the heart of the Newtown Center. There's certainly going to be pedestrian connections to this. I think it sort of provides a transitional use from more car oriented, car, car -oriented uses, you know, uh, outside the bounds of the Newtown Center. And then when you get to the heart of the Newtown Center, uh, where things will be more pedestrian oriented and closer together. Nevertheless, though, there is the, as Paul pointed out, there are sidewalks yes. that, that, uh, right. that go down the streets. The, the pedestrian traffic is certainly going to be welcome at the Starbucks. And as I pointed out, there is an outdoor seating area. Uh, as well, which and will probably only be usable about four months out of the year. But <laughs> and the dynamics of the retail world has really changed you know, since COVID. You know, before right. we had the restaurants that typically wanted to drive through, and obviously the banks. But but now you're looking for the regular retailer is looking to have a drive through because so much of the business you know came from people ordering and and letting if not a drive through at least an area where you can pull up and park and they bring stuff out. So it's really Everyone's talking about, you know, what am I going to do if there's another, you know, pandemic that comes through? So it really has Hopefully changed the way folks. Yes. There yeah. will be. There will be. <laughs> Tom, do you have something? Yeah, I do. And, and Michael, you, you, you bring a, a, I think, a very telling point to, to this conversation. So, so this spot is a gateway to our new, new town center, right? right. So, um, in my mind's eye, my personal opinion is that there needs to be some sort of wow factor. I don't know how you do define that, but that that and we I think we do a fairly decent job in our in our zoning regulations pointing some things that could show up a, a wow factor. And I don't know if you've given that consideration here, a tower or a clock or or I'm just no, we, we absolutely have. This is just a, a representation okay. of what a typical Starbucks looks like. Yep. These weren't prepared specifically for this meeting. Okay. We didn't have the, really have the time to, uh, to do that. So as Paul pointed out, for our, our subsequent uh, preliminary uh, application, we'll have renderings, site, site, excuse me, I can speak, site-specific renderings. And that's what we have talked about uh, putting in a tower so that, it, that to give you that exactly that wow factor as you come into the, uh, the, the new town center. Great, thank you. Great, you love to be able to see it from the industry. <laughs> that's, that, that would be, that would be uh, even be might, better. Really like, <laughs> good advertising. Yeah, we might have some issues with that with some of the other boards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, Mike. Yes, we've uh, been looking at gateway elements at both the Fisher Road entrance and the Route 62 entrance. We've been working with some of the same team that we've worked with on the big art, little art uh, installation that we did, uh, you know, four or five years ago at the mall itself. And it, that's not to say that there can't be things done on the Starbucks site itself, but in terms of a wow factor a gateway, it may be that, that elements make more sense to be uh, focused more on the actual gateway itself. So that regardless of whether you're coming to Starbucks or any specific place at the Newtown Center, everyone coming into it will experience uh, that wow element and again we're in the early stages of brainstorming that and, and so on and, and uh, that would be a separate uh, separate element that we come in with at the appropriate time it, it's it's interesting and then i'll just I, I Google Starbucks, and there are thousands of different designs out there it's pretty incredible what they what they have done yeah, like, yeah. But, um i have a question the second story is there a use in that? There is no second story. That's actually it's, it's that tall to block all the uh, the rooftop equipment. Okay. So uh, I'm sure there are probably uh, some folks who don't want to see that. So it's already planned for. Okay. Um, you need to run. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got about maybe thirty seconds. <laughs> 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 I'm looking out for Barry Town. <laughs> Good neighbor. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Actually, I, I. Are there any questions you have for me before I have to head out? We're digesting this now, but I don't think so. Okay. Are there any questions? Please raise your hand. I see no hands up there. 
and Matt, Matt Moore is here uh, with Evernote, he's a partner and um, our architect and engineer as well. So, okay. thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Have thank a good evening. You too. Right, you're not going to set an alarm off? No. Why don't you flip it over, Pablo, to the the other elevation and uh, maybe one of the team members on Zoom can talk about quickly about what the, their thoughts are on what the Fox One building is going to Yeah, then I want to get back to the site plan. So we have the elevation sketch up that uh, that you provided. If you'd like to, someone would like to discuss that briefly. Okay. Matt, do you want me to go? So I can't see what you have on the board. I I sent it to them yesterday, but um, the we have your sketch yeah. A. Yep. Yeah. The building is a 30 unit multifamily building with a mix of uh, single bedroom and two, two bedroom units on three levels, uh, proposed to have a flat roof um, with equipment on top and, um, and common area spaces on the first level that support uh, kind of a community living environment. Um, we have one entrance that enters in uh, to the north onto the mall property road. Uh, and then there's one that, a small entry that comes in that accesses um, the street that connects the mall property road with, with the Starbucks up beyond. Uh, and then we have parking on the south side uh, that supports the 30 units of, uh, 30 units of parking that support the uh, tenants for within. Um, the materials are going to be, we haven't selected colors yet. So this is, uh, just a representation of the different, um, textures throughout, uh, but we'll try and keep neutral or earth tone materials of a cementitious board type finish. Uh, so like a hardy plank or certainty cement board, uh, with some wood accents and, uh, and other amenities. So. It's very similar to what they have in, in downtown Barry um, for uh, for a similar property. What's the address of that property? What's that? What's the address of that property? You know the address of that? Down in down in Barry City. No, I'm mute, Matt. Summer, Street. Mute. Summer Street, correct? Okay. I think. Tech, I, technically, it's on Keith Avenue. It's on the corner of Summer Street and Keith. Okay. It's the Down Street office as well. So if you were to Google Down Street, that's the that's the address. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Did you have? Anything else you want to do in your presentation, or do you want to talk site plan? No, or? no, we're all, all yeah, any areas you'd like yeah. to ask questions about at this point in time. Uh, no, not really. I, I mean, I, I think we're gonna we're gonna talk to Tom as we go forward and, and determine just what the the street should look like. You know, exactly what is the cross section? What what do we want for walks? What do we want for space between the walks? Um, and and kind of nail that down, at least get some sort of understanding what the what the board and what the town would like to see. And then essentially we'll go forward with our street design. So so Paul, have you gone through your analysis of these two buildings with respect to uh, page 2.10, the B streets, the build two line, the the parking yeah. setback line. Have you gone through those? I believe those? we have, and I think we're set with okay. those. Yeah. So I, I think would because it's this is new regulations for myself yeah. as well as this board. That that if you could put a spreadsheet together and show what the, what you know this is the regulation. Yeah. This is what's what what on the streets going to be. And, and but, then, but much yeah. as we had landscapers basically say your requirement isn't what we've done. Type of thing. You know. Yeah. It's helpful. Yeah, we can certainly do that. 
uh, help, it's helpful in educating this board who's not familiar with this regulation. Yeah. Well, none, none of us are, so it's <laughs> educating all of us. Right. Um, if there's, yeah, go ahead, Paul. Well, it, what about public transit? Uh, there's a stop in front of the mall, but what will there, I, I just don't know, will um, the other housing have a stop there or where is the closest public transit shut the stop? So the closest is probably the mall. I mean, they'd have to go to the mall. You know, um, we could have that conversation with public transit. Usually, they don't like to have too many stops, you know, too close together. Because um, every time they stop, it lengthens the route um, time. But uh, certainly, something uh, something we could talk about um, as to whether or not you wanted another stop, or whether the one stop in front of the mall was sufficient. They're pretty proactive in, in looking at that and yeah, arriving okay. at the effective solutions, recognizing they have scheduled to maintain, but they also need ridership. So, right. right. Uh, I was just thinking with the two housing the projects there, yeah. people coming with bundles of groceries or whatever, you know, that sure. they might not want to walk too far. I, yeah. I think perhaps the, the point might be made is just as we're going along with this. Reach out to the public branches. Let's let them know what we're doing. Yeah, here. yeah and see if they have any thoughts and start, yeah. having, start thinking ahead. So, um, I get, I, you know, I'm an engineer, so you ask side questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, entrance, uh, both both places, places where you enter onto the um, mall entrance road. Uh, the first one is as you, as you enter. How far is that from the? Uh, Intersection with Route 62. Uh, our property is about 125 feet in from the edge of Route 62. I'm talking about the drive. I'm interested in the driveways. The driveway, so, so, or, so it's so really not a driveway. It's yep. a road. It's a beach. So from Route 62 to the B Street is uh, 150 feet. 150 feet. That's what it looked like. I wasn't. Yeah. I was sort of working with this drawing. Didn't have a scale. At least not that I could read. <laughs> so 150 feet. Um, have you thought about that? I mean, it, it, I realize that's probably part of our old plan. Uh, the original design, is it, Tom? It is. It is. Yeah. It matches your plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, nobody asked me my opinion on that one either. So <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a series of public hearings. But, um... I, I think 150 feet is is certainly on the short side. Uh, all right. Yeah. But but I think I think what you guys see is that the, the nature of the mall road is, is going to change. I mean, right now you pull in there and it's like, you know, pedal down, go, you know, you're getting in. But but now with the new alignment and with the, with the street, you've got the sidewalks, it's more pedestrian friendly. You've got the 90 degree corner, you know, as you go. And I, I think you're going to see that, uh, you know, speeds are going to be different. It's not going to be as a high speed road as it is now. You know, it's just, you're just not going to be able to go that fast down. I think and that's I, the intention. I think what needs to be baked into this is these traffic calming structures, you know, where, where bump outs for pedestrian crossings, uh, uh, the the T intersection, maybe it becomes a rotary. I, I don't know if that maybe helps. Maybe some gateway thing or something. Yeah. That's kind right. of yeah. Slows, yeah. visually slows people down. Okay. I can't help but be concerned. It's, yeah. it's, it's close. Um, Valid point. You got a slip entrance, which I don't like. I'm not, not a fan of slip entrances. Uh, and that may be something that we'll want to think about in the long term. Help me with the slip entrance. Basically, Basically you got a separate lane that allows people traveling um, westbound to slide off and slide off. <clears throat> they don't have to even, you know, they just barely take a glimpse to their left to see if somebody's coming. That's about it. So they're moving. Mm -hmm. Although I don't not I don't I, I'm a frequent user, I don't see a lot of speeding on that. Uh, no, well, that's because the road is so. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's a traffic coming. I tell I tell not to say that in front of the. Ben, you're not smiling, Ben. Yeah. Ben, you're not smiling. <laughs> say traffic coming. That's yeah. right. <laughs> it's an enhancement. And then, of course, the other the other place where the B Street again goes back to the um, the uh, entrance road is it uh, it's 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 offset from the uh, exit from Chestnut Place. Yes, and I'm yeah. not, not a fan of that, and, and our bylaws actually speak to that. Uh, but it's you know it's not prohibited; it's just discouraged. So, and but really, 
that's how this works if you want to do this. So. Yeah, so, so moving it up so it aligns just really compromises the space that's left on the inside of the building. It gives the Ever North building a lot more room than it needs, and it really shrinks the usable space, you know, to the west. So uh, I would agree, ideally, we'd line up, but it, we are matching what the uh, the Newtown Center plan shows. So we're, we're right, pretty much right on. What is there any, any argument as, as uh, site plan designers to actually move that further away from the other? We're sort of the midpoint, uh, making the other lots a little, little bit larger. Yep, we could look at that. It just depends on how much the Fox Run gets squeezed. As you go to the east on the Fox Run property, we start running into a class two wetland. It starts to okay. squeeze the parking lot and, and the building itself. But th there's the potential to maybe, you know, get it another, you know, 20, 30, 40 feet, you know, which every little bit would, would help. So it just, it just, it just you know, again, it's, I, I don't envision a lot of traffic on that other mm -hmm. uh, road. Uh, it is two way, if I remember correctly, Tom. It is yes. two way. Just, um, yeah. So, um, so, so both would be two way. One's a street and one's a, one's an entrance. But uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't remember what kind of traffic volumes they projected. It's just one of those things I don't like. <laughs> okay. uh, inherently, I try to avoid it. Sometimes you can't. But I didn't. Also, thought to myself, if these lots here were a little bit larger, could these? Be used, you could be utilized differently, you know. Yeah. Um, yes, they could. More marketable. Yeah. Did you look at if the school sale went through before you started building, and so you knew this road would be in? Did you look at turning the Starbucks so that it was parallel to this road? Uh, we ground? have not looked at that. We, we we pretty much looked at the new town center plan. And, and how many hoops you had to jump through to get it. And we made the decision that we need to stick as close as possible to the plan. Mm -hmm. We're just nervous that if we start rotating things and moving roads and stuff, then the downtown development board might come back and say, hey, this, you know, this isn't what we've approved. This cross street is critical for us to keep our designation. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're being careful to say to the plan as much as we can. So it does... Theoretically, face a street. It faces yeah, that uh, ancillary yeah. street there. Yes. Yeah. That, that cross street could be a longer cross street. That is what I was where I was going. But yes, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not encouraging. I'm just. Just had the question was, did you look at it? Because right. Yeah. Would get rid of that. I'm just. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Corner from as opposed to yeah. midway point. Yeah. It, it, uh, excuse me, to Tom's point earlier, to, by keeping the Starbucks aligned the way it is. It allows more for that uh, for that wow factor that you know you're looking to move it. It's the closest point to uh, to the, uh, the, the 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 road in its current configuration, its current alignment. Yeah, I was suggesting that. Yeah, well, I, that yeah with the current configuration, you couldn't, you couldn't change. No, but even if we could, it, it yeah. may, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's the, the Starbucks is, is current configuration. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I, I really wasn't looking at that so much. I was looking at yeah. just extending that a little bit. So we came, came back out in the midpoint. Um, Paul, I believe these are parking spaces baked in here. I, That's I, correct. Okay. Yep. Thank yep. you. Where were you pointing? I'm sorry, right along this yeah. edge, yep. this B Street. B Street requires on-street parking, and they right. incorporated that into it. And, and your comment about public transportation, we could certainly utilize, you know, three or four of those parallel parking spaces to sort of bus stop there. Mm -hmm. We just restrike and put the sign up, and the bus could pull in mm -hmm. and load or unload there. But, You're talking about the mall access road, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's B Street. Uh, correct. Okay, I thought that was a C Street. No. No, it's a it, B Street. It is in here. Okay, thank you. So, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. but there are no streets in the new town center other than A, B. B, and P. Okay. All the other ones go away. A, B, and P. Right. I mean, to be honest, we have some reservations about the Berlin Mall Road being a B Street and having parallel parking a lot. Right? We have a lot of traffic comes and goes. We have truck traffic that comes to go, but uh, that is going to be a requirement of the zoning regulation. And we're we're committed to meeting that. And it slows the traffic. 
So it does slow the traffic. Um, how many parking spaces are provided in each of those? Uh, there's 30 spaces for Fox Run. Okay. Um, remember how many? So that's one Starbucks? per unit. I believe it's yeah. 27, 27 for it. 27 for Starbucks. And what is that based on, the 27 for Starbucks? Uh, Starbucks, to be honest, they, they have a certain uh, huh. requirement for stacking distance for the drive through and for the number of parking spaces. Obviously, Starbucks operates thousands of hundreds of thousands, maybe, of, of these <laughs> units around, and they have a lot of data and, and, uh, and they're very specific in, in what their requirements are. They're good to work with in terms of building architecture and making changes and things like that, but they have certain things that they require to make their restaurants successful, and that's what that plan is based on. And you propose uh, per parking that's perpendicular to the yes, and um, uh, yes, on, on the B Street, yes, mm -hmm. on that section of the B Street, yeah, that section of B Street, yeah. Um, yeah. are you comfortable with that? Uh, yes, uh, we are. Yeah. So, will you will this be landscaped at all? Yes. Yes, that's that's a, <laughs> it's a really big parking area compared to the size of the building. Yep. We think that most of the traffic on that B Street will be Starbucks related. Hmm. You know, there'll be some traffic going to Fox Run, but but Fox Run. You know, a 30 unit Fox Run building off the top of my head um, generates about six tenths of a PM peak trip per unit. So we're only talking about 18 trips during a PM peak hour uh, yeah. in and out of apartment buildings like that. So we don't see a lot of a lot of traffic. So you know, we don't anticipate that people are going to cut through the Starbucks parking lot. You know, to get to Walmart, to get to Chestnut, or get you know someplace yeah. else. It's, it's just a slow way to go. So we think that we'll be okay with the with those parking spaces to there. The reality is that may be a destination point, and people will come there and will turn around and leave again. <laughs> That's quite possible. Yes. Is has there been any thought and any justification of making that ancillary street a one way street? Well, uh, we haven't thought about that, but um, that's a possibility. I mean, your the zoning regulations seem to encourage two-way traffic on your streets. You know, our, our, our initial read of it was mm -hmm. like, all right, we, we want them to be two ways and not and not one-way streets. So that's that's what we've shown. You're we're talking about the, showing talking about the street goes around the back of the pickup. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying like right here. Oh, that no, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there's perpendicular parking along. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I you know, force of habit for me. I said a question. I was driving a 19 foot long truck out there. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. Turn, it doesn't turn into those things well at all. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And so if it was a one way, we we change it to diagonal parking. Yeah. It's a lot easier to get. In and out. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm not sure your regulations really. I don't see what to that. You know, buy it, really. I, I don't think they encourage that. I'm not saying it's not a possibility. And, and again, we're always nervous what the downtown development folks yeah. think. You know, <laughs> my guess is the downtown folks are going to want two way traffic on the streets. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, one yeah, way traffic looks too much like a private drive. Mm -hmm. One they want to street. Yeah, this is a, a Classic project with uh, too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it's hard when we think about, you know, obviously we, we need to satisfy this board, first of all, but we've got the Active 50 Commission, we've got the downtown development folks, you know, we've got the people who are providing the funding, obviously right. have a big say. So yeah. there's a lot of a lot of folks mm -hmm. throwing their two cents in and mm -hmm. kind of manipulating it. So we're, we're trying to keep all the balls in the air and, and yeah. keep the thing moving the best we can. Carl, do you have any questions? Not about the plan. I'm wondering when you will apply for Act 250. Will you do it uh, in conjunction with our application or will you wait? We'll probably do it in conjunction uh, with applying to this board. And you're and you're you're gonna be prepared for them, right? <laughs> yes, we will. The <laughs> center thing is gonna be that's gonna be a big piece of this. Well, we went through it with Chestnut, so we're yeah. we understand what they'll be looking for. Well, by that time, it'll be a new board. Three new appointments. Yeah. 
but but I think what ha what's now in place is this designation. I, I yes. think that gives greater appeal to an Act 250 application. I, I really do. Anything further you'd like to run by us or tell us at this point in time? I believe so, unless, unless someone else. Yes, Tom. Well, I, I would just like to say I, uh, my thanks to Heidelberg. Uh, uh, Heidenberg. Heidenberg. <laughs> Heidenberg. That's, that's Berlin Mall. Yeah. At, at Berlin Mall. <laughs> now LC. Uh, Down Street. Everybody. Uh, this has been a, a, a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And thank you for this effort and your commitment to this project. It, it will speak volumes to the people who aren't attending this meeting. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're excited. We're excited yeah. to get it going. Uh, you know, we think. The downtown designation, despite the hoops, is great. You know, the new town center designation, it obviously it's going to bring you funding. It's going to bring a lot more possibilities yeah. for the mall as we go forward into the center part of the mall. So we're, yeah, we're hoping this, this is going to turn out as good as everybody hopes it. Yeah, it is. I think it's really going to be successful. Yeah. Well, this is the kind of development we want to see here. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. As, yeah it's going to bring a lot of people to the area. Yes. Uh, we're... we're, we're we're coping with learning our own new regulations <laughs> and then applying them properly without bias. <laughs> right. Yes. So, okay. well, there are no other questions. So, so what are you thinking about coming in with an application? Well, we have a lot of work, you know, to do the do the full plan, but um, ideally, we would we would like to uh, apply to the town uh, sometime in October. Um, thinking that October, maybe early November, thinking that there's going to be a little bit back and forth mm -hmm. between staff and ourselves, but hopefully we'd, we'd get in front of the board in December, uh, expecting at least two meetings in front of the board. Mm -hmm. Certainly there'll be things that we need to work out and come back with, but we would, you know, we ideally we'd like to be here in December, wrap it up um, in January and, and right. basically, you know, make our Act 50 application around the 1st of January also. Great. Again, we're hoping for uh, an April start. That would yeah. be ideal for us. Yeah. So for this board's uh, edification, the, the town of Berlin has received a grant to look at a bike and pedestrian, uh, and it's, they, they've included some of that uh, assets on, on their plan. Uh, scoping study, well, we'll probably sign the contract this week for, for that consultant. We've just found uh, Friday, we were just awarded an $80,000 grant to look at a scoping study on Fisher Road diet there, on, uh, which I think would would really benefit all parties. Right. Uh, make it pedestrian friendly. Uh, and so uh, just going through the RFP uh, process on that to select a, a, a consultant. So. There's a lot of good things happening here. So we, we've got a great story to tell. And I hope everybody tells the story because it's a <laughs> wonderful story. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Barb. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and one additional comment is yeah. on the on the new road alignment that comes in, you know, if you look to the plan closely, you'll see it, it does impact um, a class two wetland. Yes. A small portion right. of it that comes up. So that, that, that will be one of the very first things that we're going to do after tonight is we're going to contact the state and use our wetland consultant and we're going to start the process in obtaining a, a wetland permit to impact that. It's a, it's a relatively small impact because the fact you have the new town center plan is a designated plan and it shows it um, where mm -hmm. we have a fairly high level of confidence that we'll be able to negotiate that process with the state. Um, we don't expect to impact the wetland or the wetland buffer anywhere else in the project, at least in this phase of the project. I can't, I can't say in future phases, right. but, uh, but we will be pursuing that. We realize it's on school district property, but um, we can start that process and get it moving because it, it is a slow process to get a additional use determination from the state. Hmm. Is that the boundary you're showing? Is that the wetland boundary or is that the buffer boundary? That is the wetland boundary, not the buffer. So in addition to that, you've got some influence. Yes, we've got a buffer impact and a wetland impact. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that permit typically takes um, you know, six to nine months uh, in the process. So if we're going to be ready for April, we need to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, well, we, we made that commitment to start. It's an excellent opportunity for mitigation there, I would think. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
we'd love to build a big gravel wetland next to it. You know, that was <laughs> ideal for a stormwater. <laughs> for a stormwater use, it would make yeah. a lot of sense. It's the perfect spot for it. Uh, yeah, it would be great. Yeah. Okay. Great. Other questions, comments? How about ready to wrap this up? All right, well, thank the board for your time and uh, listening to what we have to say. Thank you. Good job. Thank you very yeah. much. No, I think it's great that you come in now just to get us think, get us all thinking about this. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces to this yeah. one, so it's going to take a while. So we've been thinking about it for a long time. <laughs> this would be a lovely project. Now we're, we're ready to do it. We're ready to stop thinking and do it. <laughs> really good to be here tonight. Really good to be here. Good. Really excited. So. Okay, well, right. This was a sketch plan review. We won't leave a hearing, so we don't have to close this hearing, right. in my opinion. Okay. I think uh, we've had a good chat. Uh, uh, I do have one other item on the agenda tonight. If we've done this item, tonight. thank you, gentlemen. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rushman, good to see you again. It's been a couple of years. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. We have a set of minutes, which I don't even remember which ones they are now. Um, oh, boy. The last minute, meeting I missed. Which minutes? <laughs> June. June 7th? Yeah. yeah it must be, I think it June. It's the one I missed. Early June. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Thank Good you night. very much. Good night. And thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Um, I believe I probably normally ask them. If, I'm sorry, I've got way too many right now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I made whatever corrections. I think you did. I don't know that there were any edits. There might not have been any edits. Um, uh, yeah. I'm going to ask for a motion for two minutes. Um, here to later to be named. <laughs> yeah, it is our last meeting. Yeah. Some well, we did have some discussion, as I recall. I mean, we did, did we do the, yeah. the email and, stuff. I think you made some suggestions and you said you did it. And it looked all looked good. So I will. <laughs> so I'll second uh, tourist motion. Here. Okay. Motion to made by tourist, seconded by John. Yep. To approve yes. the minutes. Uh, and I also and all those in favor of that motion, please yes. signify by saying comments on the motion. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Carla. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's all we have before this board. Did you have anything else, Tom? No, I do not. Thank you. Congratulations on your. Uh,